they make it look so easy. Deconstruct a New Yorker cartoon and what do you have? Simply a drawing and a caption, or so it seems, but not so fast. A lot of people think, hey, this is easy, I could do this. A cartoon, both the drawing and the caption to get it absolutely right is extremely difficult. It's like constructing a hand grenade or some explosive device that needs to be very precise in order for it to work and for you to laugh or for it to have some insight in, into life. I remember on Seinfeld, Elaine Bennis tried to do a cartoon and it was incredibly awful. I did it. I had to stay up all night, but I finally came up with a great New Yorker cartoon. She thought it was very easy and it looks kind of easy. And some of the art is even sort of naively simple. It's a pig at a complaint department. Yeah, and he's saying, I wish I was taller. <laughs> well, I got a complaint. This cartoon stinks. Bob Mankoff has been cartooning for The New Yorker since 1977 and cartoon editor for the past six years. What is it that you're looking for? What is it that makes you say, this would be a good cartoon for The New Yorker? Basically, our humor in The New Yorker is about ourselves. It's not, for the most part, the humor that ridicules the other, and that can be fine. I mean, if you're an editorial cartoonist, basically your idea is to bring down, you know, the mighty and stuff like this. But after Afghanistan and Iraq, it's how are we reacting? You know, it'd be easy to make fun of the Taliban, okay? That's like shooting fish in a barrel. I'm looking for the communication of an idea through the medium of humor. So when, you know, after 9-11, we have these guys at a bar, and the one guy is saying, I feel if I don't have that third martini, the terrorists win. But to me, it's not just funny. The New Yorker cartoon occurs in the New Yorker magazine. It's part and parcel of the whole ethos of what the magazine is. A lot of people want to be part of that ethos. Over a thousand submissions arrive every week from everywhere in addition to those drawn by staff cartoonists and contributors. Marisa Acuchella sold her first cartoon to the magazine in 1998. It was the best feeling in the whole world, and I just thought, this is so fabulous, and I'm so excited. And I thought, oh, this is not that hard. And then I realized, you know, after that, after getting rejected and rejected and rejected and rejected, that it's really, like, very, very difficult to do. and. Um, being a cartoonist is all about rejection. Each week she submits about 15 cartoons, often gaining inspiration while sketching at her boyfriend's restaurant in Greenwich Village. How would you describe your sensibility? To me, I'm just reflecting what I see all around me. The women of New York who, you know, have this sensibility and this wonderful irony. They're really fabulous looking and great, but they have this like inner, you know, they're strong, but then there's moments of insecurity and doubt and irony, you know, they, I just. Neuroses. The, the neuroses, and it's really fun to do and to be inspired by them and to sort of like make fun of them a little bit. And when I do it, I'm making fun of myself, too. It's tough to make a living it as is. a New Yorker cartoonist, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you have to do a lot of different things. But the thing is, you still want to be in the New Yorker. That gives you the most credibility. It's an honor to be in there. An honor to be there, but hard to achieve. Out of the 1,000 or so cartoons, about 20 are actually published in any given issue. The right okay. <laughs> Who decides? The boss, of course. New Yorker editor David Remnick. Every Wednesday, the final selection process begins when Bob Mankoff presents the top 50 cartoons from the week's batch. Joining them, managing editor Jacob Lewis. <laughs> when it comes to cartoons, I would think it's a very subjective process, just like art, humor. Absolutely. I mean, what appeals to some person may not appeal to the other. Sure, the level is very high, and I think some weeks the level is such that if you switched around the yes basket and the no basket, uh, very few readers would be any the wiser. You're making very fine distinctions, and it has to do with laughter. I mean, who the hell knows at the end of the day? You do the best you can. So, David, in general, how important are cartoons to the New Yorker? Oh, they're everything. They're everything. I'm under no illusion that people get their New Yorker as they walk through the door, and they said, honey, there's a 25,000-word piece on Iraq. Let's read that right away. 
Now, we, we have that, and that's an essential part of the magazine, but I also know people read the cartoons first. 99% of the people and the other 1% of the people are lying if they say they don't. <laughs>